You know, a big part of our show and, and, and what I enjoy the most about our show um, is, is not the company of you, but at the same time, that was a compliment. It was hidden. It was subtle. Did you did you feel it? I think it hurt. It hurt. I'm not hurt. sure if that was a compliment. All right. <laughs> I, I tried. But um, a, a big part is that the underwater part. You know, uh, I, it is, I, I, it I, is I, what into, makes into the blue. Right. From the moment we started this show, it was it was number one to me, and it was the most important thing because I, I as a kid growing up, I could sit and watch like Mutual of Omaha, and this guy talked. There was no people in the shot, and it was on for an hour, and it was animals doing all kinds of things, just in their natural uh, situation. So I, I really wanted that part to be, be a, a heavy load on Into the Blue. And so through us, you know, working out, uh, diving, um, you know, a, a lifetime of diving, I, I got one of my best friends to, to come on board and he's our underwater camera guy. Uh, he ain't, he's not scared of anything. I, I, I laugh at how many times a new cameraman will come along and they'll look at Jake and be like, that guy's crazy. Growing up in the Florida Keys, you know, we're just uh, catching lobster, spearing fish, and so I've been on the water my whole life and um, feel pretty comfortable in the water. Oh boy. Was in the water with a, uh, with a swordfish and uh, got in a bad spot and got between the fish and uh, in the boat and he, he, he saw me as a threat and he was trying to defend himself and, and he almost got me. But, uh, you know, he hit the camera, broke his bill off in it, and uh, swam away. And, and that was the end of that. It happened real fast. It probably happened within less than a second. He found himself in the wrong spot. He was in between the fish. So you had your fish out here. You had the boat here. He got in between the two. And what that allowed is that allowed that fish to come back. You know, whereas if he was on the outside, which we've, happened, we've had in the past, where I had a swordfish and it, he was on the outside and the swordfish tried to make a move at him and all I did was just thumb, yeah. thumb it and, 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 and put the, pull the reins back and the swordfish you know, couldn't get to him and, uh, and so he got the great shot and what have you. What happened this time is he got in between us and the boat. You can't put the pressure on anymore. Now the fish is free and that fish actually made him a, a, a move on him. Um, you know, a, a swordfish is a very you know, strange animal like we said before. And, but what we, one thing we do know about them is they're very aggressive. If you look at other swordfish, they are beat up. They got stab marks in them. I think they spend their life either fighting over positions for breeding, uh, fighting over food, or fighting off mako sharks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mako shark is one of the baddest sharks out there. And I believe, and I, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna guess that over 50% of his diet is swordfish. Yeah. Because it's a fatty, huge meal. And those sharks don't like to jeopardize their eyes jeopardize their gills, um, they're going to make a move on something that's going to be very uh, productive to them. And killing a 200 pound fish is very smart for, for a mako because if he takes that in, he's probably good for a week or so, you know what I mean? And, uh, well, I've seen it, I've seen how they do it. They cut the tail off and then when it bleeds out, they bite the bill off and then the, the carcass will float to the surface and they'll eat it around that gut sack until their last meal will be the gut sack, and, but they can follow it for weeks. And, and you know, you, I've even heard stories of people catching sharks with, with, with sword bills uh, broken off in their- Mako sharks. Yeah, yes. in their bodies. So the swordfish is very scrappy, different type of animal. Um, it, it's really strange, it's, it's, really, it's a fighter. So uh, I, I definitely, I'm glad it all worked out well. Well, but, they, they attack boats. Yeah. Uh, and Jake was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time, took a glance and blow from the bill and it yeah. got stuck in his scooter, thank goodness. Yeah. It makes for a great story had, now. He had the camera, uh, you know, we have our cameras mounted to a scooter and he had that as a shield, uh, which he was able to get in between him and the sword. But let me tell you something else, it really scare you, is that sword might have thought the scooter was the, the head, or you know what I'm saying? Or that, that was what you had to cut off, you know, like that, that was the head of the snake, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and so. It, maybe it did hit what it was at. And, and listen, with an eyeball that big, believe me, he, he knows where he's going and what he's doing. But nonetheless, Jake's still with us. <laughs> and we look we look forward to many 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 more years of great underwater footage. So thank you Jake Perry.